Hey guys, my name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Just forewarning you guys right now, just gonna come out and say it. Tomorrow for Crown Jewel, you're gonna see a thumbnail and it's gonna be really, really offensive. I really don't give a shit because that's the kind of things that I do. I have fun doing it. I don't make money from this bullshit, so the best thing I can do is try to be super duper creative. So, just forewarning you, it's gonna be a very, very offensive thumbnail. And who knows? I mean, I don't really find it that offensive. I think it's actually kind of funny, because I like making funny thumbnails, but there might be some pussies right there in the comment section. There might be some pussy viewers out there. I'm just warning you right now before you get your tassels in a bunch. Thumbnail's gonna probably be pretty offensive. I already made it, and I'm not backing out of it. So it is what it is. But speaking of thumbnails regarding Crown Jewel, that's what we have on the tap for tonight. So without further ado, let's get on with it, right? I just got finished recording. Oh, by the way, and I recorded the intro for tomorrow's show right away because I have to go to work from, um, I have to go to work 5.30 in the morning, and like, I'm not gonna be home till like around two o'clock in the afternoon. So I actually am gonna miss like the first hour of Crown, well, I'm not gonna miss it. I'm gonna have my eye on it. I'm gonna be watching it and keeping it on my cell phone. But like in terms of actually reviewing it right then and there, I'm actually gonna be a little bit late. So if I get things kind of wrong, or you're gonna be like, oh, Devonte, what the hell? Understand that I'm technically gonna be missing. I mean, I'm not missing it. I'm just like, I can't keep my eyes watching it directly. You know what I'm saying? I can't be as intricate with the first hour as I'm going to be for the rest of the show. Because, well, I'm still at work. I still got like an hour. I got about an hour. Yeah, I get off at uh, 2. So I got about an hour. I think the show starts at 1. I got about an hour to actually um, not actually pay too much attention to the show as much as I want to. But I'm going to try, though. And I'm still going to review the first four matches, obviously. But uh, yeah, let's start talking about that because you guys don't give a shit about that. That's for tomorrow, and we're going to talk about the last show for tonight. So, as I said before, what do we have on the tap for tonight? Hey, is that Logan Paul? Is Logan Paul going to be wrestling? Oh, no, no. That's Rey Mysterio. Okay. So, we got a weigh-in between Rey Mysterio and Logan Paul. Uh, Bianca Bella returns to entering Gashin versus Bailey. John Cena is up in the hitch house. He's up in the hitch house. Hey, I think this is John Cena's last show before he goes back to Hollywood of his pussy ass I, I could be wrong though i think it is though i got finished talk i heard um earlier about him getting permission by uh sack after sack after those lazy bastards those millionaires who are protesting because they can't make more millions of more millions upon millions of dollars and they want you guys to stop what the fuck you're doing you poor people to continue protesting on their behalf to get to make more millions of dollars yeah so totally he's going back to them they give him permission to come to you and he has to go back home it's getting dark uh roman reigns is going to try to silence la night before the fight in saudi arabia kevin Owens versus austin theory a donnie brook rules match between brawling brutes and pretty deadly um okay seems like it's gonna be a good show kind of maybe who knows whenever i get these things wrong you guys never you know you guys gotta lambast me on it in the comment section so without further ado let's get directly into the show and let me start rambling my fucking mouth because i know you guys want to see more of the show and i'm still rambling my fucking i'm still rambling my fucking let's get into the show shut up Devonte. let's go right now promise you right now seriously let's go all right i, I will definitely say this regarding la knight and roman reigns i would definitely say this now has the build been amazing no to be quite frank the build has not been amazing for roman reigns in la night now i'm not saying it's bad i'm not saying that it's one of the worst things i've ever seen but it's pretty mid i mean you guys can we admit that can we all just congregate together and just come to the conclusion that the build between la night and roman reigns has been pretty damn mid but that's okay because you know why they proved tonight and this is what I always say what's missing in professional wrestling. In particular, I know I'm always picking on them, but AEW, I mean, that's the part of the reason why I have with this whole uh, Jay White and MJF stuff is that, you know, I look at Roman Reigns and I look at LA Knight, and you know what I see when I see these two? It just oozes star power. Now, obviously, I may have you know a little bit of quips a little bit of a worry when it comes to la night because again as much as i like him as much as i like seeing the reaction because it does get you involved with the show seeing how the fans usually react to la night you know again lately and roman reigns brought it up in his promo it, it does hurt i can't stress this enough it does hurt a little tiny bit knowing that la night isn't the most original guy if you know what i'm saying like he did um well, so Roman Reigns and LA now, I'll give an example. They had this promo, right? You know, they're going back and forth. And it was a line that Roman Reigns dropped where he said, you are nothing more than a cosplay redneck version of my cousin. And 
I agree with him. I agree with him. It does hurt a little tiny bit to see LA Knight in this position carrying himself in this way. I can't be the only one that sees this, right? Like, his reactions are great. I love doing the whole LA Knight, yeah, gimmick. You know, I love all that stuff. But when he gets on the microphone and he starts with the mannerisms and the nana, which is literally a ripoff of Austin's, eh, eh, you know, things like that just take me so out of the character when you just know what he's basically ripping off and i wish he stopped you know like if you want to take inspiration from rock and austin i can't think of two better people to take inspiration from you can do that but dude like you gotta start like little by little just inch over a little bit and start being a little bit more innovative and having your own you know, you can't take things and then blatantly rip it off and then reword it and then think that, oh, well, I, I well, it's different words and therefore it's mine. No, it doesn't work that way. When the mannerisms are still there, when the infliction and the voice are still there, when the action is still there, it's, it's very hard to not notice. And it, it, it really does get infuriating the more and more I hear him on the microphone. But then at the same time, though, going back to what I was saying about that promo, that little excerpt from Mr. Roman Reigns talking about his his little redneck, his little redneck cousin, his little incest cousin. You know, you don't do shit like that either. This promo was, even though I do recognize the star power, even though it's not as if these guys weren't lacking words, they weren't lacking emotion, there, weren't, there wasn't any crowd involvement. I mean, specifically the lyrics to their song is what's giving me, you know, problems you know like i talked about la night but roman reigns also why would you do that like you have a match with this guy you, like like i don't really see how that's putting him over by reminding people like i can say it everybody in the audience can say it you can say it backstage if you want to but don't blatantly make it a point to bring up that yeah yeah everybody look at look at the rock look at stone cold the rock you know, what, what, i keep forgetting the nickname someone gave me it was so great stone Dwayne the rock johnson steve austin some shit like that it was really really clever I, I i can't speak it verbatim but like don't make reference to that i mean you're just indirectly burying them when you're saying shit like that man this whole promo even though like it had all the things that kind of made him look like a star and all this other kind of stuff which i did appreciate don't don't do what these two did don't bury your opponent indirectly the way roman reigns did it don't blatantly take other stars attributes and then use it to the degree that we can actually make note of it because it just ruins the ambiance it ruins the aura it ruins the energy and who knows maybe that could just be me in the end of the day it's not as if rock and austin aren't around anymore it's not like the younger fans have any clue what rock and austin were doing on a weekly basis so one may say that oh Devonte, maybe you're thinking about this a little bit too much maybe you're going too deep into this and that's a that's a very fair point especially if you're younger but unfortunately i'm not younger unfortunately i lived through that generation i lived through that era and i seen it every week and i miss it and one of the reasons why i miss it is because today's superstars they aren't as innovative and they aren't as creative credit where credit is due that these guys look like mega stars going out there talking on the microphone at the, in the manner of how they're actually talking but don't remind me about an era don't remind me about a bygone era that i very much miss especially in the end of the day where it, kind of just feels like you're not doing anything to progress the business Roman Reigns he may know that also you know I'm trying to progress the business and you're trying to regress the business yeah he's not wrong he's not wrong with that being said though let's continue with the show I see Austin boring ass theory speaking of regressing the business going out there and he's about to fight this Canuck Kevin Owens let's continue on <laughs> you know I gotta say man that was that was good I like that I like that you just had a uh, we had a little bit of a backstage segment, if you will. You know, actually, I should probably say, like, you know, they had a little bit of a recap backstage. You know, they did their thing backstage. They were saying words, you know, recapping what, what was going on. You know, Lo Logan Paul punching Rey Mysterio in the face. And, you know, you got Carlito, Caribbean cool. You know, you got, uh, what's that nigga name again? Uh, Santos Escobar. <laughs> They're like, oh. Oh no, you, you got punched in the, in the, in the face. Andale, andale, andale. And Carlito, he's all, he's all like, Revisa la rey. Yes, that's the more Alepola. 
I kid, I kid, I kid. If you understood what I said, I kid, I kid. Está bien? We're good. Okay, we're good. Okay. Continuing on with the show, though, because I gotta say, this show's going by pretty good. It's going by, it's going by pretty quick, if you will. You feel me? It's going by pretty quick. What else happened on the show? Because right now I'm watching this garbage-ass match with Charlotte Flair and, uh, uh, the Shotzi Blackheart and, um, uh, what's the name again? Piper Niven and what's the other girl's name again? Uh, Chelsea Green, so it's not anything that I necessarily care about, but you know what? What else do we have on the show tonight? Oh, yeah, um, we have Bianca Belair. She got into a little bit of brawling. She got into a little bit of spat, if you will, a little bit of a brawl spat with, um, uh, the people from Damage Control. Oh, I should talk about this also. What am I burying the lead for? I can't bury the lead. Oh, you think we're talking about Kevin Owens and uh, the Bowen Theory? No, 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 no. Aburrido. No, I'm not going to talk about uh, Austin Theory and, and Kevin Owens. No, they can sit there and they can sit to the side, sit in the corner. They can chill because we ain't going to talk about no boring match. We ain't going to talk about no cosplay Steve Austin. We already got one cosplay Steve Austin. We ain't going to go around talking about another cosplay Steve Austin. By the way, if you care, because I'm not talking about this match ever again charlotte flair ended up winning the match kicking chelsea Hart, chelsea green chelsea smack whatever i don't fuck her name man whatever what's the name again chelsea man i don't know they ended up losing the match who cares but um and i gotta say also before i continue i thought chelsea blackheart was a lot thicker than what she appears she's skinny as hell man like she she's skinnier than um charles over here man that's a goddamn shame goddamn shame goddamn shame and we got john cena so coming coming us you know i'm burying the lead talk about the lead Devonte. that's what you need to focus on right now um so we had bobby lashley and the street prophets and they were like talking amongst each other and logan paul comes through because he's an actual star and bobby lashley's like yeah i like communicating with the homies who happen to be stars and you have montez four and angelo Douglas, and they're like are we not stars and bobby lashley's like i like to communicate with the homies who happen to be stars and he clapped up logan paul again and they were talking amongst each other and then logan paul left they dapped each other up they're all from the hood because logan paul's from the mean streets of ohio yeah i understand he's from puerto rico but he moved to puerto rico because he's rich and you're not and i'm not i wish i was rich like logan paul i wish i had my wife getting cucked out i wish my wife fucked a bunch of men you know whatever it's cool though i understand logan paul you gotta pair some of that some of that some of that crypto zoo money you owe everybody that's cool though logan i love you logan can't wait to see you at the way in but uh while he loved you had um uh miss b fab herself miss joy from fridays you ain't gotta lie craig you ain't gotta lie that's okay whoever she is i'ma be the ass <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I cannot tell the difference between Joy and B-Fab, I swear to God. You know what I will say, though? Yo, uh, Joy, oh, I mean, B-Fab, no, you know she's Joy now. Joy is a lot taller than what I thought she was. Let me call her B-Fab. I don't want to confuse everybody because some of you might be white as fuck. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yo. B-Fab is taller than the bitch, bro. I thought she was way smaller than what she appeared. And that's a goddamn shame, bro. What happened to my nigga, um, um, Ashanti? You know, is he going to go back doing songs with Nelly? Going to go back doing songs with Ja Rule? Ain't it funny? No, hey, that's J-Lo. Although I did hear Ashanti was supposed to be on it. So what, is, what songs are Ashanti saying? Baby, 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 baby. Do, 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 do. Gonna rip off Scarface Mary. Okay, whatever, though. Um, Yeah, but no, she's a lot taller than I thought she was, though, man. But that sucks to be Ashanti. It sucks to be, uh, uh, what's the nigga name again? Top Dollar. I mean, you got Swerve Strickland over here killing it in AEW. You know, you have B-Fab Joy over here, and she's about to go join Craig on Fridays. And you got, you know, Top Dollar just jacking off somewhere. You know, I don't know. What is he, what, what, what's he, is he making some shitty rap album? I don't know. I mean, maybe him and Richie, what's that Richie guy name again? Maybe him and Richie can, like, collab and make the shittiest rap song in human history. I don't know. Call themselves the Kings. I don't know, with the DA, though, right? Uh, and then what would, you got uh, Shantae the Adonis, who's somewhere in catering. Maybe he's growing his hair out like Cedric, Cedric Alexander, and they could be, you know, you know, Dreadlock Kings or something like that. I don't know, man. I mean, it sucks to be them, though, man. But good, good on you, B-Fab. Good on you, Joy. You know, make that money. Hang out with hang out with Bobby Lashley. Be a manager for him. That's that's good. But uh, coming up next, I think I see Solo Sokol. He's, like, wrapping up tape on his arm. Look at him just wrapping up those, some, those Samoan wrists. And, you know, maybe he's going to go out there and he's going to bring out his inner umaga. You know, maybe not die of a heart attack. No, that's dark. See, there I go again, being an asshole. Okay, let's continue on, let's continue on with the show. I'm, I'm being an asshole right now. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Oh, my heart. Okay, I'm done. I'm going. I'm continuing. 
you know, I don't know how familiar you guys are with like uh, debate bro streams or like political streams or anything like that. Like you guys are familiar with uh, the uh, leftist YouTuber uh, Destiny. Like every time I look at uh, damage control, is it just me or I just look at those girls? I'm like, ah, oh, you, you'd be perfect candidates to like be on Destiny stream. Like they just look like such SJWs, you know? Like, like they just look like like Destiny's ex girlfriend laugh. Like I don't know, they just. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just looking at them I'm like, hey, you'd be perfect candidates for, especially Dakota Kai. She looks like a classic Destiny ex girlfriend. I don't know. Looks, looks like she has like a like like some type of severe mental disorder. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, she has a match Bailey that is a, coming up in a little bit against Bianca Belair. I would definitely be keeping my attention on that for sure. I can't wait to watch that. I can't wait to see Mexican booty Bailey do her thing in that match. And you know, you got you got um, damage control. They're barred from ringside and. You know, you got, um, you know, you got, um, what's her name, Hikaru Shida, and she's just like, don't worry, Bailey, you can do it all night long. You, you guys are, you, you, if you're a little bit too young, you don't know where I got that from. That's okay, that's okay, you know, you're, you know, you're probably, as I said before, you're doing backstrokes in your hairy dad's ball sack. Don't worry about that reference, okay? You, you, you all right. But now, uh, what else did we get on the show? Um... God damn it. Oh yeah, John Cena and Numaga. So they had a little bit of a a little bit of a tidbit, a little bit of a back to back, a little bit of a shooting from the hip, you know. And you know, I'm happy that John Cena didn't fully cook some uh solo Because I'm looking at it and I'm just like, God, you know, like you know, Solosco didn't really do anything. I mean he, he's only a character, it's not like a he's a CM Punk or a Roman Reigns, a guy who has to carry the ball or something like that. You know, he's just a character. He he's very limited on his microphone skills as is. You know, you don't want him having to talk so much. And, you know, it's pretty unique having Sol Sokoa talk in the microphone. You don't see that very, very often. And he's like, you know what? Say goodbye to them, John Cena, the, the audience, because you're never going to see them again. And, you know, I'm going to hit you in the throat with my thumb. And John Cena's all like, you, uh, I'm going to cut you in 90 seconds. Wait for it. <coughs> Wait for it. Okay. You're a bargain basement ass. Da, 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 da. Like, what the fuck? And you know, I, I will say this. The raspy throat thing, I don't know why his throat's really raspy. I don't know, like, like maybe Vince McMahon was backstage and he wanted to say hello in his own special way. I, I'm not really sure why, why John Cena's throat is like that. But I will give credit where credit is through. Michael Cole, you know, he's like uh, he's like doing his announcement thing. And he's just like, oh, John Cena. He, 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 uh, uh, he, the, 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 the yeah, 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 the thumb, the thumb thing, the Taz, he, Taz, bargain base Taz hit him in the throat for them last week, and, he, and he's selling it, and, and, and coming up on Rampage, why am I, fuck, everybody who's a cosplay, I swear to God, these guys, okay, I'm dead, I'm being goofy as fuck right now, but yeah, that was all good, you know, it's good, it's getting us through the night, okay, it's just building up to our next final stop, which is the greatest show of all time, Crown Jewel. And can't you guys wait for that? You guys can't wait to see uh, John Cena and Solo Sokoa. You can't wait to see Roman Reigns in LA night. Got Ray Mysterio and Logan Paul coming up later on tonight. You know, this is a good show so far. I'm liking this show. We got the brawling boots about to have a little bit of a steel cage match. Why am I lying to you guys? Nothing that shit is happening for real, for real. My dumb ass. Nothing better have a little bit of a street fight. So let's get to that, see what they gonna do. Then we got Bianca Bella and Bailey. Then we got a Logan Paul and Ray, and hopefully we're gonna get something with Logan with um not Logan Paul. What's that motherfucking name? Oh yeah, LA Knight and Roman Reigns a little bit tonight to close out the show, but I don't know. And all we're gonna do is just wait and see. So with that being said, I'm still rambling. Gotta stop doing that. I keep doing that. Been doing that throughout the night. That's like the key moment of tonight. Let's continue on. Stop it, Devontae. Stop it. Huh. We're at the main event already, huh? I mean, this show went by really fast. I'll definitely say that. I mean, it's not like this is one of the best SmackDowns of all time, but we still got a little bit more time left. It's 9.39 currently right now. But, I mean, presumably, are we at the end of the show? I mean, Bianca Belair is about to have a match with uh, with uh, Bailey, but I got to presume they got to do one more seven with LA Knight and Roman Reigns, right? I'm going to hold out hope. I don't think they're going to go off the air tonight with... Yeah, I, I just can't believe that. That'd be fucking retarded. There's no way they're going to go off the air with Bailey and Bianca Belair main eventing before Roman Reigns and LA Knight main event your show tomorrow I just can't I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and believe that but you know what we've seen weirder things but let's talk about what we've seen so far um so we had this uh little weigh-in with Rey Mysterio and uh Logan Paul and it was pretty 
boring, pretty nothing, actually. I was expecting him to go out in the ring and do all this stuff. I was expecting a Mike Tyson pull apart. I was expecting Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, here's to you. Something along the lines of that. I don't know. Maybe I'm being crazy as fuck. That's probably what it is. I'm I'm bad shit crazy. I'm Looney Tunes. I'm I'm crazy. I'm insane in the membrane. You, 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 maybe, maybe I just got my hopes up a little bit too high considering Logan Paul was a part of this. But no, they... they they, they didn't do anything you know they they went face to face for some reason they played their theme songs for like five seconds that was pointless shit pointless as shit they didn't even have that much of a back and forth you heard a little bit of rumblings logan paul pretending he's black yeah that's right little man that's right you keep running that damn mouth i'm gonna knock your ass out like yeah that's the kind of thing you sound like look at this stuff. carlito versus bobby lashley what is this 2000 and goddamn six I'm looking at the card for next week. Carlito versus Bobby Lashley. What the hell? Wow, wow, okay. And here I am, 32, about to trans... Oh, 31, about to go... Forgot my goddamn age. Alzheimer's. 31, about to go right back to being 14 all over again, right? Oh, my God. But, yeah, now you got this little way in with Rey Mysterio and Logan Paul. They didn't really say much. I mean, nothing. I mean, when it was all said and done, they got the weight. I think they got Logan at like 215 or 213 or some shit like that. And they got Ray at 175. So they went with their build weight, I'm pretty sure. Because Ray has always been 175. I mean, he clearly looks like he's been gaining a little bit of weight. Maybe it could be some of that little Mexican uh, chub. Little Mexican gordo over here. But yeah, uh, afterwards, Ray Mysterio got a microphone. No, actually, um, Logan said some of the slick shit. He was like, oh, look at you. Buena sweat there. You know, oh, look at you. Patting him on the head and everything. And... Rey Mysterio ended up bitch slapping him, and they started having this whole pull apart, and it was so fucking cringe. And then Rey Mysterio got a microphone and hit Logan in the head, and he got even more fucking cringe. And then, like, he's like, he hit me with a weapon. Y'all see that? He hit me with a weapon. Take my hat off, and I'm gonna put it back on and walk away. What the fuck was this? This was terrible. Fucking horrendous. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Terrible. Terrible, I'd say. But speaking of terrible, though. You had this hardcore match with the Brawling Brutes taking on uh, Pretty Deadly. And I'm not even going to say that this match is horrific. Maybe I shouldn't say terrible. I wouldn't say bad. It's just, golly, bro. And again, I put this all on AEW for just doing everything. This is exactly what Jim Cornette was talking about when he said, like, when you do so much, bro, like, like, what is it anymore? I mean, I think he made the reference. It was a metaphor that Jim Cornette used a couple of years ago where he was. And I loved it. I really, really love it. He's like, when you're driving your car and you're passing by, a, you know, two dogs fucking or something like that. At first, it's like, oh, wow, that's really fucking terrible. But look at that shit right there. Those are two dogs fucking on the side of the road. After about a thousand times of seeing the same two dogs fucking on the side of the road, driving by that same spot every day, it just kind of loses its luster. And now it's just two dogs fucking on the side of the road. Like, it's just cr it's just terrible now. It's, just, it's terrible. You know, that's how these hardcore matches are nowadays for me, man. It's like, it's not even to say that they're bad. It's just that... <sighs> I don't know, man. When it has no substance to it whatsoever, when you have AEW that literally throws everything, including the kitchen sink, on fire with thumbtacks down the drain... When you do all that shit and then like you come right back to SmackDown or Raw and they do something like really, you know, safe, I guess that's the best word I can say, which I guess is a good thing. But like you have AEW that does so much, they kill it for their own promotion, then they kill it for WWE. And, you know, not to mention this match was sort of kind of sloppy. They damn near killed Ridge Hollins with that little suplex powerbomb they attempted to do and damn near broke his neck. Talk about karma, right? If that would have happened. But the finish essentially came with like uh, one of the pretty deadly dudes. They hit um, uh, Pete Dunn in the head with a beer bottle or something. And then they followed it up with a spine buster net breaker combination through the table. And, you know, they just got to put the hardcore matches and stipulations and extreme rules, whatever you want to call it. They need to put it to rest for a little bit, bro. Let that shit like set aside for a little bit. Do some other shit. Do some other stuff. I don't care what you do. Just put that aside for a little bit. Give it a rest and come back to it when it's not completely overused and overdone. Because it literally has no substance to it whatsoever. This match has lost as much substance and, you know, fanfare for me and excitement. No different than the Hell in a Cell matches. And I don't know, man. This just didn't do it for me. But 
it is what it is you know i mean somebody out there loved this match i don't know who but somebody did i'm pretty sure you guys did you're your fucking marks anyways but with that being said bianca Belair is fighting bailey right now hopefully again this isn't a main event but again i've seen terrible things happen before so who am i to not say this won't be the main event please god don't let it be the main event though but dear god almighty bianca Belair and bailey God damn, they're so sexy. Yo, yeah, smack that ass. Beat. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, okay. Continuing on before I fucking bust a nut watching this match. Let's go. So that's it. They really... <laughs> they really went there, huh? They really went there. I, I honest to God, I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. When I just got finished saying, oh, they're not really going to make the women. I mean, I know how it sounded. My tone, it sounded like I was being sarcastic. No, I was dead serious. I did not expect them to end the show like this. I was really expecting some type of cliffhanger going into the show with LA Knight and Roman Reigns. Maybe there's some pull apart backstage happening. You know, maybe there was something going on with Jimmy Uso and, and LA Knight. Something, something with the actual stars. Now, look, I'm not going to knock. I'm not going to take anything away from Bianca Belair and Bailey. They had a good match tonight. That was actually really good. Again, I expect nothing less. It's Bailey and Bianca. Bailey, in my opinion, one of the most, if not the best, fundamental wrestler in all of North American wrestling, in my opinion. I think Bailey is solid as fuck. She never botches. She's always on point with her shit. She's awesome. I love Bailey. All jokes aside, I love Bailey. Bianca Belair, very credible. One of the star women wrestlers today period of the world i love bianca put all that aside i know i like to be misogynistic i know i like to tell all these kinds of jokes i know i like to be play around with sexist jokes and stuff like that i'm being serious for a moment man they they killed it they they had a solid match i like the match a lot honestly it's far 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 away better than anything aew could put on this was competent wrestling get in get out and you had a nice little finish with them you know doing the whole little t tilt the world stuff going into the kod and then the finish with the little credit ending and then bianca bella putting bailey through the announce table that's fine that would have been a nice little build going into eo and bianca in the middle of the card there was no reason for this to be the main event. You have a pay-per-view coming on tomorrow. A PLE. However you like to refer to it. Look, I might have to make a video on this, man. So I'm not going to go too much into detail. But this, this women's shit is getting ridiculous, bruh. This, this is getting ridiculous. There's no reason as to why Bianca Belair and Bayley had to main event. And they do the same shit with AEW sometimes. With the women main eventing, man. Like, bruh, I'm sorry. Yo, if it ain't a bra and panties match, no one gives a fuck about this, man. Now, I'll give a little bit of leeway with Bianca and Bayley. But still, this shit should have been the middle of the car. And I'm tired of them constantly trying to push this women's shit on us, bro. There was no reason for this shit to main event. You got LA Knight and Roman Reigns right there sitting backstage. They're the two stars. They're the ones carrying the show for tomorrow. They're the ones people who are in Saudi Arabia and around the world are paying to see. That's what we want to see. And to a lesser degree, Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. Yet they keep pushing this shit down our goddamn throats. Now, if it's something respectable, like a Rhea Ripley, who's a part of the Judgment Day, then I can buy it. There's a little bit of a China vibe going on with that. You know what I mean? So I'm cool with shit like that. She's a part of a stable. That makes sense, right? But when it's something like this, no one gives a fuck about Bianca Belair and Io Shirai's feud. I'm sorry, that's just facts. You may care about them from a personal standpoint. You may care about their feud from a personal standpoint. But nobody else does. No one gives a fuck about this, bro. They ain't even got no build to it. Now, again, they did the best that they could in regards to this match closing out the show. But, bro, that could have been down the middle of the card. What I would have preferred seeing is LA Knight and Roman Reigns closing out the show. Give me something I want to sink my teeth going into this show for tomorrow. Because in the end of the day, it's a pay-per-view. Are we forgetting this? Now, granted, it's a Saudi Arabia show. And maybe they don't give a fuck about it. Maybe they want to treat it like a house show. But just say that then. Don't stack the show your way. Don't stack the show in the manner of how you're stacking up this show. And then the cherry on top for it. The cherry on top of that Sunday, you, you don't give it to us. It's just a bland Sunday, vanilla. Nothing going on with it. Come on, bro. Like, no one cares about this shit, bro. Give me what I want to fucking see. 
And again, they had a perfect opportunity to give us a cliffhanger. I'll even give you this. I'll, I'll say this. I'll even say this. You could have had Bianca Belair and Bailey in the same position tonight, in the same in the same match spot. This match could have ended like two or three minutes earlier. You could have kept them right here in the same spot, and you could have went off the air with something related to LA Knight and Roman Reigns, something happening backstage. Instead, you give us this. And tonight, I don't know what to tell you guys. Tonight's show was not good at all. This was a bad SmackDown. This was bad. The build for this show ain't got me hyped up at all going up and going on to Crown Jewel. It's just the match card in itself looks nice on paper. That's what's going to keep me going to want to see this show for tomorrow, outside of the fact that I have to review it. But goddamn, bruh. More of this women bullshit harming the goddamn show. Say what you want about sexist or misogynistic or any other stuff. I don't give a fuck. You want to sit here and try to pretend as if you give a fuck about this when in reality you're trying to cloud you. You're trying to cl you're clouding your mind. Not even clouding your mind. I can't even give you that much respect. What you're doing is trying to virtue signal with the women by pretending you give a fuck about this and taking some t some some bullshit, almost political spin on this, and trying to justify this nonsense because of how you feel in real life in regards to women. Look, I love women more than the next person. Equal rights, all this other shit. But God damn it, if they got a strong enough few where we can give a fuck about it, then I'm all cool with that. I ain't had no problem with Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey doing the thing that they were doing a couple of years ago. I ain't had no problem with Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks heading into Hell in a Cell in 2019. I ain't even had that much of a problem per se, even though I hated the feud between Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair going in 2020, what, 2021, two years ago? At that year's WrestleMania. Hell, I didn't even have that. I didn't even have that much of a problem with Rhea Ripley and Charlotte this year. But God damn it, Io Shirai and Bianca Belair, that's your closing? Come on, my nigga. Come on, bro. Come on. Be real, man. Be real. Everybody knows no one gives a fuck about this. And you're going to sit here and tell me that you do give a fuck about it when in reality, you know you don't give a fuck about it. This, is, this should have been all about LA Knight and Roman Reigns tonight. We got one segment. In the opener, if I'm a shit on AEW about pulling that bullshit in regards to MGF, you best believe I'm going to say the same shit about WWE now. Especially when they're supposed to be the trendsetters. They would they would have never pulled this shit with Austin and Rock about 20 years ago. They would have never pulled this shit with John Cena about 15 years ago. Hell, even 10 years ago they wouldn't have pulled this shit for Roman Reigns. But here we are now, man. This is bullshit, man. This show sucks absolute baby dick bro i'm sorry i'm sorry man because even with the show let's just say the show would have sucked the entire night which it did by the way if you had something strong closing out the show you know the old saying man it ain't how you start it it's how you finish it man if this shit would have closed out strong then maybe maybe i would have given it a pass but with shit like this, man, no matter how good the match is, it's more than just the match, man. I got more to say about this probably tomorrow or maybe on Sunday in regards to the women. Because I'm sick and tired of this shit, man. And you think it's going to be the same rant in regards to the women beforehand? Nah, I got something for y'all asses, man. I'm tired of this shit. My name's Millennial Smart, Devontae. Call me whatever you want to call me, man. Let me get the fuck up out of it. That really pissed me off right there, man. I don't like that shit. You got a pay-per-view coming up tomorrow. You want to put the women on last. You got two mega stars right there and the fucking opener for one goddamn segment. Again, AEW pulls this shit. You damn right off to give them shit for it. But then WWE pulls it. You want me to just sit here and just pretend it's not happening? Get the fuck out of here, man. I'm going to catch you guys later, man. Deuces. P.I.S.